For today's video, we are going to talk about how to find the domain and range of inverse functions and we are going to explain everything in details. In finding the domain and range of inverse functions, let us familiarize ourselves with the different properties of inverse function. The first one, the inverse is one-to-one -one function and function is also one-to-one -one because a function has an inverse if and only if it is one-to-one. -one. The second one, the domain of the inverse function is the range of the original function. And the third one, the range of the inverse function is the domain of the original function. So these are the basic concepts that you need to remember in order for us to find the domain and range of inverse function. So let's start and let's have an example. On the first example, f of x equals 2x minus 1. So the given example is a linear function written in the form of slope-intercept form. Always remember, the domain and range of linear function written in slope-intercept form is always all real numbers. So to write a domain, let us have domain is the set of x values such that x is the set of all real numbers. So this will be our domain. And to write the range, let us have range is the set of y values such that y is the set of all real numbers. So this will be our range. And to find the domain and range of inverse function, always remember, the domain of the original function is the range of the inverse function. And the range of the original function is the domain of the inverse function. So to write the domain of the inverse function, let us have domain of inverse function is the set of x values such that x is the set of all real numbers. So this will be the domain of the inverse function. And to write the range of the inverse function, let us have range of inverse function is the set of y values such that y is the set of all real numbers. And this will be the range of the inverse function. If you are going to find the inverse of the given function, we are going to have f of x equals 2x minus 1. So let us change f of x into y. We are going to have y equals 2x minus 1. And then let us interchange x and y variables. Let us have x equals 2y minus 1. So let us solve for y in terms of x. Let us move negative 1 on the side of x. It will give us x plus 1 equals 2y. Let us divide both sides by 2. Let us cancel this one. So y equals x plus 1 all over 2. So this will be the inverse function of 2x minus 1. On example number 2, f of x equals 2x plus 1 all over 3x minus 4. So this time, the given example is a rational function. And to find the domain of the given function, let us simply equate the denominator not equal to 0. So let us have 3x minus 4 not equal to 0. Let us move negative 4 on the side of 0. It will give us 3x not equal to 4. Let us divide both sides by 3. Let us cancel this one. So x not equal to 4 over 3. That means if you are going to substitute 4 over 3 in the given function, it will give us undefined. So to write the domain, let us have domain is the set of x values such that x is the set of all real numbers except 4 over 3. So this will be the domain of the given function. So to find the range of the given function, let us find first the domain of the inverse function. So let us write this one as y equals 2x plus 1 all over 3x minus 4. And let us interchange x and y variables. So y becomes x and x becomes y. It will give us 2y plus 1 all over 3y minus 4. And let us multiply x by 3y minus 4, and that is x times 
3y minus 4 equals 2y plus 1. So let us have x times 3y, that is 3xy. x multiplied by negative 4, that is negative 4x equals 2y plus 1. So let us solve for y in terms of x. Let us move negative 4x on the side of 2y plus 1. And let us move 2y on the side of 3xy minus 4x. So let us have 3xy minus 2y equals 4x plus 1. So the greatest common factor between 3xy minus 2y is y. And then let us divide 3xy divide by y that is 3x. Negative 2y divide by y that is negative 2 equals 4x plus 1. Let us divide both sides by 3x minus 2. Let us cancel this one. So y equals 4x plus 1 all over 3x minus 2. So this will be the inverse of the given function. That is 4x plus 1 all over 3x minus 2. And to find the domain of the inverse function, let us equate the denominator not equal to 0. Let us have 3x minus 2 not equal to 0. Let us move negative 2 on the side of 0. It will give us 3x not equal to positive 2. Let us divide both sides by 3. Let us cancel this one. So x not equal to 2 over 3. So if you are going to substitute this one in the inverse function, it will give us undefined. So to write the domain of the inverse function, let us have domain of the inverse function is the set of x values such that x is the set of all real numbers except two-third. So this will be the domain of the inverse function. So to find the range of the original function, let us have the domain of the inverse function because the range of the inverse function is the domain of the inverse function and the domain of the original function is the range of the inverse function. So let us have range is the set of y values such that y is the set of all real numbers except two-thirds. So this will be the range of the original function. And to find the range of the inverse function, let us have the domain of the original function. So let us have range of the inverse function that is the set of y values such that y is the set of all real numbers except 4 over 3. So this will be the range of the inverse function. On example number 3, f of x equals square root of 3x plus 5. So this time, the given example is a radical function. And to find the domain of a radical function, let us equate the radical greater than or equal to 0. So let us have 3x plus 5 greater than or equal to 0. Let us move 5 on the side of 0. It will give us 3x greater than or equal to negative 5. So let us divide both sides by 3. Let us cancel this one. So x is greater than or equal to negative 5 over 3. So this will be our restriction. And to write the domain, let us have domain is the set of x values such that x is is greater than or equal to negative 5 over 3. So this will be our domain. And to find the range of the given function, since the radical sign is positive, we are going to have range is the set of y values such that y is greater than or equal to 0. So this will be the range of the given function. But if we are going to have a negative sign here, our range is y less than or equal to 0. And to find the domain and range of the inverse function, always remember 
The domain of the original function is the range of the inverse function. And the range of the original function is the domain of the inverse function. So let us have the domain of the inverse function. That is the set of x values such that x is greater than or equal to 0. So this will be the domain of the inverse function. And to write the range of the inverse function, let us have range of the inverse function is the set of y values such that y is greater than or equal to negative 5 over 3. So this will be the range of the inverse function. To find the range of the given function, let us have y equals square root of 3x plus 5. So let us interchange x and y variables. So y becomes x and x becomes y. We are going to have square root of 3y plus 5. So let us solve for y in terms of x. Let us square both sides of the equation. Let us cancel this one. It will give us x square equals 3y plus 5. Let us move 5 on the side of x square. It will give us x square minus 5 equals 3y. Let us divide both sides by 3. Let us cancel this one. So y equals x square minus 5 all over 3. So this will be the inverse of the given function x square minus 5 all over 3. So as you can see, the inverse of the given function is a quadratic function. And quadratic function is not a one-to-one -one function. So to find the domain of a quadratic function, we are going to have a restriction that is x greater than or equal to 0. And to find the range of a quadratic function, we are going to set x equal to 0. And we are going to have y greater than or equal to negative 5 over 3. On our last example, f of x equals x squared minus 4. So as you can see, the given example is a quadratic function. So this is a function but not one-to-one -one because it fails on the horizontal line test. So right now, the domain of this function is from negative infinity up to positive infinity. But since our function is not one-to-one, -one, we have to restrict our domain into x greater than or equal to 0. And to write the domain, let us have domain is the set of x values such that x is greater than or equal to 0. So this will be our domain. And to find the range of the given function, let us find first the domain of the inverse function. So let us write this one as y equals x squared minus 4. So let us interchange x and y variables. Let us have x equals y squared minus 4. Let us solve for y in terms of x. Let us move negative 4 on the side of x. It will give us x plus 4 equals y squared. Let us square both sides of the equation. Let us cancel this one. So y equals square root of x plus 4. So this will be the inverse of the given function, that is square root of x plus 4. And to find the domain of the inverse function, let us equate the radicand greater than or equal to 0. So let us move 4 on the side of 0. It will give us x greater than or equal to negative 4. So to write the domain of the inverse function, let us have the values of x such that x greater than or equal to negative 4. So this will be the domain of the inverse function. And to find the range of the given function, since the range of the original function is the domain of the inverse function, and the domain of the original function is the range of the inverse function, let us have the range is the set of y values such that y is greater than or equal to negative 4. So this will be the range of the original function. 
And to find the range of the inverse function, let us have range of the inverse function is the set of y values such that y is greater than or equal to 0. And this will be our answer. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.